Hello everyone and welcome to another video on this channel. And this time we are going to build a GitHub action from scratch. There are several ways to build GitHub actions. You can use Docker or you can use JavaScript. In this case, we're going to create a GitHub action that runs as a Docker container. So what do you have to do for that? There are three steps. First step is to create a Docker file, but that's hardly surprising since we are creating a Docker based GitHub action. Now we create an action.yaml and the action.yaml defines the name of our action, the inputs and the outputs, and of course also how you need to run this action. And then we have to think a bit about publishing this action to the marketplace, although that is actually optional. Before we get to publishing, I will also talk a little bit about how you do versioning of your GitHub action. Let's take a look at the first step, the Docker file. Of course, you will always have to create this Docker file because you have to create a Docker image. But the way you run the action um, depends on what you specify in your action YAML. So in the action YAML, you can actually point to the Docker file and then during the execution of the workflow, the Docker image will be built for you on the fly and executed. But there's another way. In your action YAML, you can also point to your image that's living somewhere in a registry. And then GitHub Actions only has to pull down that image and run it for you. And in the GitHub action that we'll create, I'll show you the two ways in how that works. With the action file, you are going to tell GitHub how your action should run, what the inputs are and what the outputs should be. In our case, we will create a Docker action that is meant to run a command. And the command you'll want to run will be, of course, the input. So we'll define one input in our action YAML, as you'll see later. And of course, as discussed earlier, in the action YAML, we can specify to either build the container image and then run it, or pull the container image and then run it. Although it's optional, it's a good idea to publish your action to the marketplace. It allows others to easily find it and tells them how to use the action in their workflows. And I'll show you how you can publish the GitHub action that we create to the marketplace. Before we get started building the action, let's see what kind of action we are going to build and how it is used. What you see in front of you here is a repository called Go Template, which contains a very simple Go API. And part of the development workflows, um, there is a test.yaml. And in that test.yaml, which is just a GitHub workflow, we do all kinds of uh, tests. For example, we do some code testing. We use make for that, but it's actually Go test uh, that we run. We validate YAML files uh, using uh, Cube tools uh, for this and the Cube eval tool. But I also want to validate my deployment YAML that I use in Kubernetes and validate this against policies that I set with Kiverno. Now, to do that, I need a Kiverno CLI, a command line interface. That's not directly available to me on something like a GitHub runner. So that's why we create or we're going to create a custom action that is able to run the uh, Kiverno client or the Kiverno CLI. Now, this custom action will use a Docker container. So we will need to make sure that we create a Docker container that contains this Kiverno CLI application. Let's see how that is done. The first thing that we're going to do is to create a new repository up on GitHub. I already filled in the name, Kiverno Action. I won't set a description. I will make it a public repository and I will also add a readme file. This will set the default branch to main. That's all I need, so I'm going to create the repository. When the repository is created, I'm going to go to the code link here and I'm going to copy the HTTPS URL to this repository. Now we can run git clone and paste in the URL that I just copied. Let's run this. It clones into Kiverno Action. Of course, it's empty, so it's directly there. Let's go into Kiverno Action. And now we are inside that cloned repository. I'm going to clear this. Of course, there's nothing here except the readme md file. I'm going to start Visual Studio Code. We're now in Visual Studio Code. And for your convenience, I already added a couple of files here. Uh, we're creating a Docker-based GitHub action. So we need a Docker file to create our Docker image. 
the Kaverno tool that I want to run, that's just an example that we're using here, this tool needs the Go uh, tools because it's a, a tool written in the Go language. So we need to use Go build and so on or follow the instructions that Kaverno has provided to build the tool. These instructions are basically here. You can find that on their website. The end result is that the tool Kaverno is copied to the USR bin folder. Now, when we start this uh, container, we want the entry point to be a shell script, the entry point dot sh shell script. That one, of course, has to be copied over from somewhere. Well, we already created a source folder and in the source folder, there's an entry point dot sh. In the Docker file, we use this copy command here to copy the entry point dot sh to the root of our container image. Quite straightforward. If we look at the entry point, make sure this one is executable. So if it's not executable for some reason, uh, just of course run the following command. I've opened the integrated terminal. I'm inside the source folder, so I can do schmod plus and then x to make it executable and then the entry point dot sh. So if for some reason uh, you get a failure saying that I can't run this entry point when you start a Docker container, make sure it is an executable file. Great. Now, what is in the entry point? Sure. Of course, it's a bash script. Uh, so you will see some bash commands. Don't worry too much about what you all see here. The set minus E and set minus O basically make sure that when something fails in the bash script, um, the bash script fails and the uh, exit code is properly bubbled up, uh, of course, to our uh, GitHub uh, action. Now, we want to pass arguments to this container. So th this argument needs to be uh, picked up somewhere. And that's, of course, done here. And since our argument is something that we want to execute, we'll actually start bash again in this time or in this case with minus C. And we have to be careful to also use set E and set minus O here uh, as well. So both inside the main bash script as inside the second time that we call bash, to execute our command. Now, this command here, this command line uh, parameter, basically, we'll need to find a way to uh, to pass that on to our container. That, of course, will be done with an input to our uh, GitHub action. And we'll see later how that is done. Before you try to run the action with GitHub workflows, it's a good idea to just build your container locally first and test it out. So I'm gonna do a Docker build here, and I'm already gonna tag it as well correctly for later upload to Docker Hub, tagging it also with a v1.0.0 release. You'll see later why we uh, do that. So let's do the Docker build command. That's done, let's clear this out. Let's do a Docker uh, push as well. So we do Docker push the same tag here, I'm already authenticated to Docker Hub, so you shouldn't see any questions about who I am. We push the container up. That should be done fairly quickly because I already, of course, tested this out. There's already a version of that uh, container image on Docker Hub. Let's clear this. Now, most importantly, we're going to run the uh, uh, container. So Docker run, the same tag. And then I want to pass arguments uh, because, of course, we have an entry point that will get executed when we run the container. We want to pass arguments to this entry point so that, of course, we have this in $1 here. We do that here. So I'm actually passing arguments, put them between double quotes as well, so I can run Kiverno version from this Docker container. Let's see what that does. And indeed, you see here running command, the extra echo, and then the output. Here you see that the output of the Kiverno version uh, command that we specified. So it seems that our uh, container is working properly. Let's now turn to building the action. To create the action, you need an action.yaml file in your repo already created that for you and you see also here the contents. So an action YAML needs a name and a description. That's fairly simple. You can also do some branding and give it an icon. There are several icons to uh, use. I use the command icon and then set the color to red. Now the important point of actions is of course, what are the inputs to the action and what are the potential outputs of the action? Now, I don't have outputs. But I do want an input because I want to specify the Kiverno command I want to run, like Kiverno version, Kiverno apply, and so on. 
So I've created an input. I called it command, but I could have called this uh, anything, right? It's just a name. The input has a description, and I set the uh, input to be required. And now the important thing about the action definition is how should we run it? We're going to run this using Docker, and we're going to run this via a Docker file. Now, be aware that means that when the Docker action runs, the Docker file will be taken, the Docker image will be built and then run. That takes quite some time. We'll later see how we can refer to an already uploaded image, for example, in our case, to our image that's on Docker Hub. But very important in this case, when I did Docker run, I specified the arguments at the end of my Docker run command. Now I need to specify the arguments to Docker run using the args parameter here. And what are my arguments? Well, simply put, that's of course just my command input. And that's how GitHub Actions allows you to pass multiple arguments if you want, but I have only uh, one. So this is a fairly simple uh, GitHub action. Of course, look in the documentation to see what else you can do, but this should do it uh, for our purposes. Before you are going to publish your action to the marketplace and uh, use it from other repositories, you should of course test it and see how it handles itself uh, in a real workflow. So let's create a workflow. In VS Code, you can simply do that uh, by creating a .github folder, then a workflows folder, and then create a new YAML file. In this case, I call it test.yaml. The content of test.yaml is here. This is a simple workflow that will be triggered on a push. And we run two steps in this workflow. First of all, a checkout step. That's required because we want to check out also the action YAML to the GitHub runner that runs this workflow. And then we can just run our uh, new GitHub action uh, in the users clause with a dot slash, because that refers to action YAML in the root of our checked out code. Of course, our action was defined with a input. The input, I called it command, and the input I want to specify is Kiverno version. This should pass this as a parameter to our entry point dotsha, as you've seen earlier, and this should run Kiverno version in my GitHub workflow. Let's all test this, right? So let's commit this all. Uh, very, uh, uh, well, not very unique here. I want to call it first commit. Commit this code here, and we're going to push it to GitHub. Okay, I just pushed my files over to GitHub. And it also means that the workflow should have run. So let's check the workflow that contains our action. Indeed, here it is, first commit. Let's click on this and let's go inside the job. And here you see the run Kiverno uh, action that ran. Now, because we use Dockerfile, indeed, the Docker image has to be built. What you'll see at the end is that a Docker image is coming out. And here you see, by, by the way, the output of the go uh, build uh, command steps. The image that's coming out has this name. But the next step after building is then, of course, running the container. That's with Docker run, as I have done in my uh, on my own system. The name of the container image that was just built then GitHub passes all kinds of environment variables and so forth to this container. It has its own specific way of running these Docker containers. But it's clear that the argument was passed Kiverno version. Just like we did when we ran it locally on our machine, I passed Kiverno version between double quotes as well when I ran the container locally. And the output of Kiverno version is indeed this. Great, that means that our action is working. We tested it out with a workflow. Now it's time to publish this action to the marketplace. To publish this action, we will have to create a release. So I'm going to tags here, then I'm going to create a new release. And here you find a publish this action to the GitHub marketplace checkbox. So we're gonna check that. Uh, this will verify the action YAML it all looks uh, good. By the way, I corrected a small mistake uh, here before uh, I recorded this section because actually I called my action Kiverno CLI and I already have my, my actual action is already called that. That's a duplicate name. So if for some reason the name that you have here is a duplicate of somebody else's action, you will be notified of this. In this case, that's fine. Everything looks good. I'm going to uh, 
call my tag the v1.0.0 and then v1.0.0 as well here. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not going to set options or categories and so forth and I'm going to publish this release. So this means you have a release now. It's v1.0.0 and it is on the marketplace. We can now go to the marketplace. There it is. And if you click on use latest versions, you get instructions about how to use this action in a workflow. Now, anybody can now use this action in a workflow because this is a public repository. Everybody can refer to that repository. And in this case, when we use the action, we can use add and specify the specific version or the specific release that we want to use. Now, remember, we are still using Dockerfile in our action. That means that everybody that runs this action will actually have to first build the container and then the container is run. And that's a little bit slow. So we want to fix that and we'll show you a way how to do that. Let's make it easier now for our users to just use v1 instead of having to know what's the exact version like v1.00. You can do that by just creating a branch that's called v1. And the branch can also be referenced with at and then the branch name for your GitHub action. So to create that branch, we're just going here, we're gonna type v1 in here and then create the branch v1 from main. That has now been done. And of course, I could have done this from the editor, just doing it in GitHub now. It's a bit faster here. I'm going to modify the action.yaml because the action.yaml still uses the Docker file here. So I'm going to edit this and then remove the image Docker file from here. And I can replace this with the following. So here I'm saying instead of using a Docker file, I want the GitHub action to pull the container from a registry. In this case, that's Docker Hub. So I only have to specify my Docker Hub username and then Kiverno action v1.0.0. Remember, I created or I built that image and pushed that image manually earlier. Normally, of course, you would use a workflow to automate this, right? But that means that our v1, if I commit this, that v1 or whenever a user is using v1, the user will use, in this case, the latest version, which is v1.00, but we will pull that uh, Docker container or that image from a repository. We will not actually build this in our GitHub action. And that's what we want. Now, let's show you how you then run this in a workflow. I'm now inside a repo called Go Template, and that's again this Go API I've shown you earlier. Remember there we had a test YAML workflow and this test YAML workflow contains at the end, it contains this action. We just call it validate policies. We choose this ourselves and we use our uh, newly built action, Gebake Kiverno action at V1. So remember here, V1 refers now to the branch that we just created and the action YAML in that branch is using a Docker image directly. So let's see what that does when we run this action. Here's the output of our test workflow. And as you can see here, instead of building an image, we actually pull Gebake Kiverno Action V1.00 from Docker Hub. He pulled this down. Then near the end, you can see here we have the validate policies. It can just run the uh, Docker uh, container just as we've shown before. Of course, in this case, it's not Kiverno version. I'm running Kiverno apply to actually verify my deployment YAML and see if it complies with policies. And in this case, the output is yes, indeed, you comply with all the policies. 15 policies were tested in this case to this one resource. So that's it. You have seen now how this uh, action can be used, in this case with a V1, to use the Docker image directly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, of course, do put them in the comments and see you for another one soon. Bye bye.